Good evening, good evening, IG family. How are you? This, what is this? The third Sunday night of the new year. Have a new ring light. This ring light is bright tonight. So I just keep looking at it. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good evening, good evening. Again, once again, a little later than anticipated, but better late than never. How are y'all doing this Sunday evening? Um, okay, y'all can't tell. I always tell too much of my business while I'm trying to readjust everything. Hey, T. Williams, how are you doing? Good evening, good evening. Sunday night check-in. How are you all doing? What's going on with you? Um... You know, I always say this, so don't laugh. After a while, y'all going to start typing that I say this every time. Hey, Renee, I am just checking in with you all. I don't really have a set. What am I going to talk about tonight? We're going to just kind of flow like we always do. Anyone have any questions, concerns, or issues that are on their heart? If you put it in the comment, and if I see it, I will try to respond to that. Um, the message today... You're talking about from my bishop, I suppose. Yes, uh, was on point. Uh, I'm doing good. Thank you all. Thank you all. I am doing good. Hey, Jazz the Roofer. Anybody need um, in the need of a new roof on your home, your building, wherever? Jazz the Roofer. Yes, it's a female in the roofing industry. That's what we're doing in 2021. Give her a DM. And yes, it was awesome. It was awesome. And I won't even try to go behind him. <laughs> when greatness uh, goes forth, you just allow what they say to, um, to come forth. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So, yeah, I'm just checking in with you all tonight. I do want to make a few announcements that we're at the top of the at the top of the hour while people are clicking in and joining. I want to remind everyone, <laughs> she said, yes, I will replace your roof. She will replace your roof. Let's say this. She is a, a business that operates in integrity. So, you know, she's not going to replace the roof. And then y'all split some money on the side through the insurance company. Uh, I miss you too. I miss you too. Um, no, she's up and up. <laughs> You know how we like to get those little side deals. No, she's in business and she wants to stay in business. Um, but she is very knowledgeable in that in that industry. She worked uh, in another industry and gained her expertise before she started her own business. But yes, yeah, Sunday night check-in. I want to remind you all, probably you all already have, to subscribe to my U, uh, YouTube pa uh, channel, YouTube page. That makes me sound old when I say that. No, my YouTube channel, that is simply Christy Dobbins. For those of you ladies, ladies only, I want you to know we are having the Art of Hearing online class for the last time, I think. It is the last time I believe we will be offering the Art of Hearing in the month of February. Um, the month of March, we will start a new class. And I have not checked... Uh, hey, Tawanji, to see uh, the last time we looked, the results were neck and neck. And I should have stopped the survey already, but we are still taking surveys for a few more days for the next class that will be in the month of March. And I can tell you all those three topics that are in the running are number one for the next class that will be offered in the month of March. The new class uh, will be we're still like neck and neck for the Holy Spirit relationships. We talked a little bit about relationships last week. If you did not get on the live last week, you should go to my YouTube. It's a Sunday night check-in for last Sunday night's date. I believe it was the ninth, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, it was when we made the shift to relationships last week, the Holy Spirit did descend. And um, I believe it'll bless you, particularly if you are single. But we even talked about uh, relationships with parents. Uh, and we answered a few of those questions. So if you did not see Sunday night check-in, I would highly suggest that you go check that. Um, but yes, so for the month of February, let me start back there again. We're offering the Art of Hearing for the last time. It is a four-week class for um, 
For anyone who has been in the art of hearing, they can tell you it's much more than a class. I teach for about an hour, hour 15 minutes. I know some people that may see, seem long, but actually once we're in and we're flowing, it actually goes by rather quickly. And then we offer um, a little Q&A. <laughs> she said all of them. Uh, a little Q&A. And then we offer a time of ministry. So for those of you, we don't we do not do uh, what they taught me in the old way of, of teaching ministry uh, is we don't open you up and then leave you, uh, meaning we don't allow the word to go forth and something penetrate or something convict you or something um, causes you to need more answers. We don't just open you up and leave you. If you need a question answered, we answer that. If you need a time of ministry, we do go forth and minister. There were people who were filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit via Zoom. Listen, the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit is everywhere all at the same time. So even over Zoom, people are receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Even through closing the gap the other Saturday, um, January 2nd, I received a report from someone who said that while she was watching Closing the Gap, she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. She spoke in tongues for the very first time. So I want you to understand that while we are spiritually, I mean, while we are socially distanced, we are not spiritually disconnected. Those are not the same things. There is no no space in the spirit. We are one uh, in the spirit. We can touch and agree in the spirit. We can pray in the spirit. We can lean into the power of the Holy Ghost in the spirit, over Zoom, over the telephone, whatever the methods are of communication that you have. So I don't want you, I don't want you to feel like this current state that the church is in is limiting your ability to access God and access the spirit of God. When the spirit of God goes forth, if you are open and ready and willing to receive, he will descend up on you and in you. Yes, I do miss the in-person closing the gap sessions because they were unique. Um, we had the opportunity to just spend time in his presence, the opportunity to lay hands, the opportunity. But I do want you to know that there are no limits in the spirit and that the same thing we experienced when we were meeting together, you can experience in your home, in your car. Just be careful because it may be like you're driving drunk if you're experiencing the power of God in your car. So the Art of Hearing will be offered again the month of February. The link is already in my bio. If you have not registered, if you've gone through the class and you want to sponsor someone, we will highly, um, we will receive that. We have people who want to go through the class, but who have, because of the pandemic, been laid off on their jobs. If you want to do a partial sponsorship, you have the ability to do that also. In the month of March, we will start a new series. Hey, Cursion. And again, I sent out a survey, uh, that, and it's been a tie almost between the Holy Spirit, soul care, and relationships. So we will see by the end of the week where we land and what the new offering uh, will be. And so um, we are busy about the things of the Lord. We have a lot of great things that are coming um, down the pipe, if you will, for 2021. We will release them as time goes on. Um, but I just want to uh, stop by tonight to remind you, someone, that God loves them, that God cares for them, that God has not forgotten them. And I know every now and then, or not every now and then, but God, God loves us through people. And so I hope this Sunday night check-in is a reminder that he has not forgotten you, that he loves you, um, and that he is concerned. The Bible says he will perfect that which concerneth you. Whatever it is, whether it's great or small, you are important to him. You are invaluable in the kingdom of God. You know, this last week, and so I'm going to just talk to you about my week. You can talk to me about yours. Again, if you have any questions, you can put those in the comments. But we're kind of just flowing. I don't have a script tonight. I don't have anything in particular to talk about. Um... But this past week, I attended two funerals. I attended a funeral on Tuesday, uh, and I attended a funeral on yesterday. I believe two weeks ago, I told you all about Pastor Corey Hines, who passed away, who was a young pastor in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, only 32 years old. I left his wife, his three children, and during this 
time this weekend, we learned when they posted the obituary that she is also with child. So I want you all to continue to pray for the Hines family. The Bible admonishes us or instructs us, however you want to look at it, to bear ye one another's burdens. And you may say, I don't even know her, but you don't have to know her personally to go before God on her behalf and to hold her up. Her name is Lady Renee. You can you can lift her up. You can lift up her children. You don't have to name their names. You can just say, Lord, we're praying for Lady Renee. God, we ask that you would comfort her. Whenever she comes across your mind, oftentimes we think about prayer, of going into our prayer closet and laying on our face and all of those things. And I do that. I, I believe in that and I do that. But what I have also learned, the, the, the more I've walked and the longer I've walked with God, is when anything comes to my mind or in my spirit, spirit. I just open my mouth and I speak life to it in that moment. That means I could be driving down the street. And if somebody drops in my spirit, I just in the moment, I don't wait to go home. I don't write it down. I just speak whatever it is. And if, if, the, if I know someone is already grieving, I, I'll just say, Lord, send your Holy Spirit. God, send the Holy Spirit who is the comforter, who the Bible says is our help. God, just we ask that you cover them. You can just go before him. It doesn't take a lot of words. It just takes you speaking to him. And what I've learned is that's how you also develop your lifestyle of prayer. I've been praying for God for some things concerning my son, my youngest son, who is a senior. And what I've learned is whenever he comes to my mind or when the enemy wants to make me worry about it, rather than to stay in a position of worry, I just open up my mouth and I say, Lord, I bring that petition or that request back before you. Your word says to make my request and my supplication known unto you. Your word says, Father, that if I, I will have what I what I say I will have, your word says to believe and, ha and doubt not. So, Father, I am lifting Joshua up before you. I plead the blood over him today, God. And I just speak it. Whatever it is that drops in my spirit, I don't have to stop and hit my knees, even though I do sometimes pray on my knees. But I think sometimes we get caught up in formality and, uh, and sometimes rituals that we don't understand that we have access to the Father at all times. And that when the Bible says pray without ceasing, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm in my prayer closet all day, but that my heart is postured and positioned to get to the throne of God whenever I need. That I can be driving down the street and I see a car accident. And I say, God, in the name of Jesus, if there is any life, sometimes you can look at an accident and tell that is real bad. And I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. I ask that the death angel will be stayed over that car. You don't know. You may be the only intercessor somebody has. You don't know. Those people may not even believe in Jesus, but God will use your prayers to, uh, to help uh, stay their life and give them an opportunity. He will give them grace and mercy through you. And so I have learn. Uh, hey, boss wife, I have learned uh, to be cognizant and to be aware, not just in the natural, but in the spirit and to be aware that whatever I see, whatever I hear, that I sometimes don't just react from my flesh, but that I just begin to take it to the Lord in prayer. And so I think we ought to have a lifestyle of prayer. I think we have relegated prayer to particular times of the day. And yes, start your day in prayer or we are in your night in prayer. But I want us to grow from just having these designated times to having constant fellowship with God and that it doesn't have to be so formal. Listen, the Lord, the Holy Spirit gave this to me one time. I was, I was at work and I was working overnight and there was a lady that I was working with that I really, really respected, but she was of another faith. She was Jehovah's Witness. And even though she and I liked one another so much, she could hear me on the phone because that's how I stayed up at night, whichever my friends were night owls. I was on the phone all night. I repent because I was supposed to be working, but I was working and talking and she could hear my conversation. And one night she'd heard me just talking about God. And I kept saying God and it bothered her because in her uh, belief system, I was being casual about God. I was just saying God like he wasn't omniscient and I'm not present. And I was just using his name to her in vain. And she didn't really come at me hard. What she said to me was, you know, she said, don't you know that he's Jehovah? Don't you respect him as Jehovah? And I said, I do respect him as Jehovah. I understand that he's Jehovah. And right there in that moment, the Holy Spirit gave me an example to give to her. I said, you know, I grew up in my house 
And my father was respected in the community. And I know more people hear me talk about my mom than my father. But my father was respected in the community. And when he would go to work, people would call him Mr. Lampkin. When he was at church, he was Deacon Lampkin. He was superintendent over the Sunday school, or they would say Superintendent Lampkin. Or, um, you know, th these other titles that they would call him. His brothers and sisters called him Howard. My grandfather called him Howard. But I called him daddy. Because of relationship, I did not have to come to him in a formal capacity as someone who worked with him or someone who served with him at church. But because we dwelt together in the same house, because he was my blood and I was of his, of his uh, blood and of his body, that I was his seed, that I had relationship, that it removed the need to be formal with him. And I just called him daddy. That's exactly how it is with God, our father, who art in heaven, who is our shepherd that we shall not want. I am now in relationship. We dwell together. I dwell in him because I'm in Christ Jesus. Because I dwell with him and because I fellowship with him, because I have made my house a habitation for him, I don't have to always go to him and bow down and say, oh, Jehovah, I don't even have to do what we heard people do back in the day when they would say, oh, it's me, oh, Lord, coming to you as humble as I know how. No, no, no. I don't even have to do that because the Bible says to come boldly to the throne of grace. I come to him in the position of being a son. Yes, I am a female, but I am a son because there is no, no, no gender in the spirit. So we are all sons of God. And so when I come to him, I don't come to him begging. I don't have to come to him and tell him I'm humble because actually hum humility is a position of my heart. Me coming to him means I have humbled myself before him, understanding that he is and that because I believe that he is, I understand through scripture that because I believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So let's put out the formalities. Let's understand that God is on the throne, but he's also your father. Let's understand that he is the ruler and the creator of the universe, yet he cares about you. That's why the Bible says he will perfect that which concerneth you. So I spend my day going about everything is not formal. Everything is not me getting down on my knees. I have a relationship with God so I can call on him. Uh, at any given time, I can be driving down the street and I have to, uh, a car pulls in front of me and, and the way I call him is to yell Jesus. And when I call him and I summons him, my cry summons him and he shows up and he becomes a very present help in the time of trouble. I remember another time we were traveling. It was in 2005. We had taken a long road trip, our family from, from um, the Dallas Fort Worth area to San Francisco. And my husband likes to study maps and take uh, back roads. So we were going to San Francisco from LA on a back road. And while it was beautiful, we ended up in dangerous terrain. We ended up uh, kind of over a cliff uh, and we were coming down out of the mountains where we were coming down one way and the cars coming the other way were coming down from the mountains. And you and, and, and on the side was just a cliff. You would either go over the cliff if you had an accident. Well, it was raining that day. And as we were descending from our side, there was another car coming down from the other side. And he went right, he slid, came through the median, and he came straight to hit us. His truck was moving at maximum speed. We were, we were driving. We had no place to pull over. There was no shoulder. You could only go over the cliff. And right before he hit us, all we could do was call Jesus. And when we called Jesus right before he hit us, his, his, his truck turned. He got to, he got to the edge of us, almost hit us, and it turned. And as quickly as he came through the median on the opposite side, he went back through the median and resumed his journey. He never slowed down. He never, it never looked like he hit his brakes. When we looked in the rearview mirror, he kept going. We were in silence. Because when we yelled Jesus, it was as if he grabbed the truck and pulled it out of the way and he preserved 
our life. You have to have a lifestyle of prayer. You don't have time sometimes in the midst of trouble to, to go formal and get down on your knees and go through rituals and routine. No, I need to know that he is our father, which art in heaven. I need to know that he's a present help, that he, he, I need to understand. Thank you, Holy Spirit, the isness of God, that he is not, he was not, he shall, but that he is a, is God. He is, God is a present help. God is love. God is, God is, God is. I want you to get that. He is. You keep worrying about the future, but God is. That's why when we talk about faith, it says now faith because it is present tense. So I want you to practice just talking and calling on the name of the Lord. If you begin to call upon the name of the Lord every time you got worried, rather than sitting in worry or sitting in despair, if you just begin to call on the name of the Lord, call on him until that feeling leaves. Because listen, sometimes your feelings will betray you. Your feelings, thank you, Holy Spirit, will make you feel like you don't have faith. But I need you to know your feelings aren't real. They are valid, but not real. Well, what do you mean by that, uh, Elder Dobbins? What I mean is your feelings are subject to whatever you tell them. So when, the reason I say they're valid, if someone hurts you, then it's valid to express that you hurt me. But they are not real enough to the point that it, keep, it keeps you in unforgiveness and it causes you to go into bitterness. So we have control and authority even over our feelings. So sometimes the only way to put your feelings under subject is to open up your mouth and cry out to your God. David said, this poor man cried out and you heard me. I don't know why I'm talking about prayer. I don't know why I'm telling someone, but I understand prayer is one of my passions. Prayer is one of the things that I believe that as believers, it is the weapon against the enemy. And I believe any prayer you pray is actually spiritual warfare. I know we like to label things as spiritual warfare, but anytime I am praying and anytime God is answering me, it is actually spiritual warfare. We don't have to get deep. We don't have to go into a trance to understand that when I call on the name of Jesus, that he can send 10,000 angels to come and to war on my behalf. When I call on the name of Jesus, even that is a prayer. I don't even know what I was talking about. I was just talking about when you go along your day, whatever it is that drops in your spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, that's why you have to lean on the Holy Spirit because the Bible says he brings all things to your remembrance. I was talking to you about praying for Pastor Corey Hines' wife. But not just her, anyone you know, anyone that you know that's going through anything, just, just call their name out before the Lord. You don't have to see a lot of times we don't do it because we think if I told you I'm going to pray for you, I'm going to, I need to go and pray at least an hour or two. But sometimes you just need to call on their name. You just need to bring it to his remembrance. Not that he forgot, but because he told us to. I'm going to say that again, not that he forgot, but he told us to pray for one another, to bear ye one another's burdens. So he told us to hold one another up. Listen, there are times that we really intercede and we go into intense spiritual warfare for people. So I don't want to negate that, but I want you to understand. I don't need you to think that because you can't engage like that, that you, what you said, say to God doesn't matter. I don't want you to think that you have to go and be in prayer for an hour in order for him to hear you. No, he hears you whenever you open up your mouth and you talk to him. So I want you to pray. I went to two funerals. Uh, his funeral was on yesterday. Um, it was, it was a, a, a glorious service. It was a glorious service. Um, it was a great sermon. Um, that was executed um, to give people somewhat of closure. I, I really won't go into that sermon, but it was really a phenomenal sermon that Dr. Darius Daniels preached. Some of you may have heard of him. And he talked about one thing he said in there that resonated with me. He said, God promised you, and this is a translation. He didn't say it this way verbatim, but I want to say it this way so you get a full understanding. Basically, God promised you everything but an explanation. Some of us are stuck in wanting an explanation from God, yet you may never receive it. 
The explanation is not a requirement for God to restore you. It's not a requirement for God to heal you. It's not a requirement for God to extend his mercy and his kindness to you. You may never get an explanation. You may never get a this is why this happened. But what you do have is a promise that God will never leave you nor forsake you. What you do have is a promise that he is a very present help in the time of trouble. What you do have is a promise that the Holy Spirit Spirit is a comforter. What you do have is a promise. And sometimes, sometimes the enemy causes us. Now, this is me. This is what I, I also pull from it. The enemy keeps us stuck in our mind wanting to know the answer why. And we get stuck on wanting to know the answer why. And we start seeking the answer more than we seek God. That's what prolongs or delays our healing is we aren't really seeking God. We're seeking an answer. God, why didn't my marriage work out? God, why didn't you tell me my child was going to get on drugs. God, why did this happen? Why did this happen? But if we would redirect those prayers and stop asking God why and lean into the power of the Holy Ghost and say, God, I don't know why this happened, but you still promised me that you would never leave me or forsake me. I don't know why I got this diagnosis, but you still promised me that the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. Lord, I don't know why my child did this, but you still promised me that the fruit of my womb is blessed. God, your word promised me. Your word promised me that if I train up a child in the way that he should go, when he's old, he will not depart. God, I'm putting you in remembrance of your word. I'm calling forth your word. I don't understand why. I don't know why. You have not given me an explanation. But God, I stand on the truth of your word and I stand on your promises and I'm believing for your promises to come true, even if I don't know why. I don't want you to spend 2021 wondering why. I, I, there are areas in all of our lives that we wondered why. When my mom and brother were killed in a car accident, I wondered why. And in my mind, then at 18 years old, and I say that because sometimes in our youth, we take things so literal that the Bible says that we don't give space for God to be God. Oh, that was a word right there. Sometimes we take the word so literal and it is true, but we don't leave space for God to be God. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so because they're not the same, sometimes we're wanting an explanation why, but we wouldn't even be able to un uh, even understand or comprehend the depth of what he's doing because his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. When my mother and brother were killed in a car accident, I spent years saying why. I spent years reminding God, saying, God, in my juvenile mind, I'm going to say it that way, in my juvenile mind. Father, you you said that if, if uh, to honor your father and mother in the Lord so that your days may be long upon the earth. My grandparents have always said my mother was their most obedient child. I don't understand why the child that was obedient did not get to live long. He never answered that question. He never answered that question. He never told me why she departed. But he did when I was ready. That's, that's the key. When I was ready, when I could receive, he did give me healing. He did begin to allow his word to heal me. The Bible says he sent his word and he healed him. He did allow, I did begin to then receive healing through the preached word. And I began to receive healing through the prophetic word. And I began to receive healing through my time in prayer when I was ready. It had been there all along. But the enemy had caught me stuck on why. Why? We say that oftentimes, why do, why do good, bad things happen to good people? I look at my father's life and my cousin was on here. I don't know if he still is on here. One of my first cousins, his mother is my father's only sister. And, and, and I remember a conversation that they had because, you know, my father's brothers, all of his siblings, I'm not going to say they didn't believe God. They just didn't walk the way he walked. Because I do believe they all received salvation. They just didn't walk the way he walked. But yet, my father, um, walking the way he walked, being different, if you will, than many that grew up with him, began to be diagnosed with an, with an illness when I was young that impaired his ability to walk and to function uh, at the optimum level. 
And, and, and in the middle of all of that, by the time he had finally grasped, and I, it took me to grow up to understand what I'm telling you right now, because when my mother died, all I saw is I lost my mother and my brother. But it took me to grow up and to receive healing for God to them to begin to speak to me about my father and everything that my father went through. And he began to say, your father was a, was a, was a man who had many hopes and dreams that he didn't get to see fully fulfilled because an illness overtook his body and once the illness overtook his body and he finally accepted that this is what it was going to be life is going to be this if I move around I'm going to be in a wheelchair he finally accepted and as a child now I can look back or as an adult now I can look back and I could see my daddy's wrestle I didn't know it was a wrestle back then we just be like why is daddy in the room and he doesn't want to talk but now I understand he was wrestling with the fact that I will no longer I won't walk my daughter down the aisle when she gets married. I won't walk my daughter, uh, my other daughter down the aisle when she gets married. I won't get to walk and go into their graduation. Somebody is going to have to push me there. And so I now understand that. But as a child, it's like, what's wrong with daddy? Daddy's just in the room. He doesn't want to talk to anybody, but he was warring over what was happening in his body that he had no control for over. I don't know who this is for, but somebody, listen, if, if, if you really love God and love your parents, God will give you an explanation for everything that you thought was off everything he will begin to show you and I didn't mean to use that word explanation because I'm talking about it what he will give you is an understanding of your parent and God began to let me see your daddy wrestled your daddy was grieving long before your mother died he was grieving having the, the full use of his faculties he was grieving not being able to take himself to the bathroom he was grieving not being able to walk in the church the way he used to be he was grieving he was was grieving that his life no more that he didn't feel like the head of the house because he no longer could function in certain areas he was grieving that all while you were being a spoiled brat all while you was worried about having the brand new clothes all while you were worried and your mother went and got a second job so that we can make sure nothing fell short when your daddy had to stop working all while you were worried about yourself Christy all while you thought it was all about you all while you got to go on and go to high school and have a good time and all while you got to enjoy life he was sitting at home by himself grieving grieving that he couldn't be a full husband to his to his wife grieving that he was no longer able to stand in the position of who God called him to be uh, or at least he thought grieving over everything that it looked like the enemy was stealing and by the time he began to accept this is what has happened this is my lot in life his wife and his only son dies I can only tell you how God talks to me by the time I got enough healing for God to be able to talk to me and he said, you lost your mother. You did. You lost your brother. You did. But your father, he lost almost everything. You went on to college and left him back at home. You went on and got married. Your sister went on to college and she went on and got married. But your father, he not only lost first his body faculties, then he lost his wife and his only male heir. I mean, we don't like to talk about it these days, but that is what keeps your name alive in the earth is if you have a male heir. He lost his only male seed. He lost out of order, out of turn, his son who died at 11 years old and you still worried about the new clothes you still had the liberty even though you were grieving you still had the liberty to worry about the new outfit a new car being being best dressed in college trying to look your best trying to do whatever you still had a luxury he never had he lost it he lost it he lost it let me tell you something I'm gonna help somebody tonight when I married my husband, who is my second husband, when I married my husband and my husband sat down with my father and I, my father told him things he'd never spoken to us as girls, me and my sister being the only two that are left, he said, you know, I knew sometimes my daughters were in trouble, but I couldn't do anything. But one thing the Lord showed me that is that Howard, that was my daddy's name. You, you, maybe you can't drive to where Christy is, but while you land in this bed, you can pray all night. And he told my husband, so I prayed all night. When I could sense something was wrong, I interceded and prayed Christy out of I don't know what because some things he never found out because that's how we are 
Some things he never find out. But you know, I can look back and say, oh, when I was in the club, there was one way in and one way out. And every time there was a shooting, it was his prayers that snatched me out. When I was in a relationship that I shouldn't have been in, it was his prayers that snatched me out. And that although he couldn't physically come get me, what he did in the spirit in, in intercession was to, to have my life spared in prayer. He prayed back the death angel. When it was nothing else he could do, he did it in prayer. And I'm telling some parent, that child is grown. I don't care where they are. I don't care if, if, if they act like they're going to do it their way. You can save their life through prayer. My father laid in the bed. He said, I would lay there all night and call their name. When I couldn't do anything else, I called their name and then called Jesus. The blood over Christy. The blood over Carol. The blood over Christy. The blood over Carol. His prayers brought us both back into ministry. His prayers brought us both back into a healthy union. His prayers brought us both back. Two girls wounded from losing their mothers. We responded two different ways. But his prayers, his prayers. Somebody you don't even think you're worthy enough. He told my husband, it broke my heart. I cried when he told my husband. He said, I often thought God took the wrong parent. Oh, but I need you to know God left the parent that God, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He thought because my mother would have been able to come get in the car. And I had that old school mother that would come tap me if she needed to, even in college. He thought because my mother still had the full capacity of her limbs and could get up and come and get us or do whatever we needed, that that was the most important parent. But listen, he was still the head of the household. He was still the priest of the home. And God allowed the priest of the home to put on his prayer shawl and pray and call his daughter's name all night long. Somebody on here doesn't need to give up. It may look like, or thank you, Holy Spirit, it may not look like what you thought it would be, but God is still going to get glory out of your life. He's still going to get glory. He still used my father. He couldn't come get me in the physical because he couldn't no longer drive, but he could come get me in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, there's nothing like intercession. Intercession is really, when we say we're praying for one another, we don't really intercede the way the old church used to intercede. The other funeral that I went to last week and I preached her funeral, and I know this kind of sounds weird, but I want you when you have an opportunity to go to my YouTube page and I want you to look at the sermon called um, A Transfer of Power because I preached that sermon last week at Sister Robbie's funeral. Sister Robbie was a prayer warrior indeed. Listen, I told someone else about her yesterday. I don't even know that she really started off being called to the prophetic, but if you pray long enough, you're going to prophesy. If you have a certain walk with God, and if you spent a certain amount of time to God, he's going to talk back to you, and you're going to begin to commune with him. And when you pray for somebody a particular way, God will then speak to you on their behalf and give Give a word on your behalf. Listen, Sister Robbie, we pray. We praise the Lord for her life. We praise the Lord for, for his goodness, that he loved us enough to allow us to receive the impact of her prayer life. Listen, I, I went into her house. I guess this is testimony service. I went into her house on one summer. Uh, Miss Betty, who is another older woman, invited me and said, I want you to come to a prayer service. Well, it was interesting to me because Miss Betty is older. I was friends with her daughter and I knew her daughter was traveling with her job and was not in town. But Miss Betty invited me over. And when I got there, Sister Robbie, Sister Robbie's sister, who is Sister Brenda, for anybody that went to the Powder's house way back in the beginning, when Bishop would preach, he had a reader. You, you have to be a certain denomination to know what a reader is. It's when someone reads the word before the, before the pastor uh, preaches. He'll say, turn to, let's say, John 3 and 16. That person will open up and will read the word before they preach it. And so... Sister Sister Robbie was Sister Brenda's sister. Sister Brenda used to be the reader for Bishop way back in the day uh, at the Potter's house in Dallas. And so Sister Robbie 
When I walked in that day, Sister Robbie and Sister Brenda were there and I'm looking like, okay, I'm the only young person here because I was 32 years old at the time. I was like, I'm the only young person here, but Miss Betty told me to come. And when we walked in, Miss Betty said, the Lord told me to call you. I did. I told a little bit this last week, but you can't tell it all while you're preaching. Yes, yeah, Sister Brenda. Uh, and, I, and so I, I, I said, and she said, well, what do you need, baby? And I began to tell her. That my child is in the hospital. My youngest child, the one who's a senior, was born at 27 weeks old. He had heart surgery at 10 days old. He was due on uh, August the 23rd. I gave birth to him on June the 3rd. He stayed in the hospital from June the 3rd to August the 21st. They kept him almost to his due date. But in the process, when a child is born premature, I have to give you the background to understand the testimony. When a child is premature and they have been feeding him, uh, you know, feeding him milk through his veins and feeding him all these kind of nutrients because when they're born premature, they could not drink at all. But after a while, when it's time for them to start to drink or take a bottle, they have to start trying to wean them from it being put in uh, through their veins for them drinking through a bottle. But because the children are so small in the NICU unit, um, that's the neonatal intensive care unit because they're so small when they drink a bottle, it is equivalent to an adult going jogging. So that means when they are taking a bottle, they are exerting the same amount of energy that you and I would if we would take a bottle. I mean, if we were going jogging, therefore they only allow them to try to drink for about 30 minutes. If after 30 minutes they can't take the full bottle, then they have to give it to them through the tube again because they don't want them to exert so much energy that they lose weight. I know that was a long explanation, but I needed you to really understand why that was important. So I told Sister Robbie, my baby is having a hard time. We don't think about it, especially if you have a baby full term. We just give our babies bottles and they start drinking. We don't think about the fact that they have to suck, swallow, and breathe. That while they are taking a bottle, they are actually suck, swallowing, and breathing all at the same time. Well, when a baby is born premature, they learn some of those things at different stages. So it is often difficult for them to suck, swallow, and breathe at the same time. So when Sister Robbie asked me what was wrong with my child, I said to her, well, I told her everything else that was wrong, but I said, but my main issue is in order for him to get healthy enough to come home, he has to take his own bottle. He has to suck, swallow, and breathe at the same time and take his whole bottle. She responded to Miss Betty and said, Sister Betty, I hear the spirit say, go get a full glass of water. And, and Miss Betty is very prim and proper and she's a great hostess. And she said, no, no, not one of those little glasses. I need you to get a full glass so that she can have a full glass of water, at least eight ounces of water. And I need you to fill the glass with water. And I need you to put a straw in the water. And I need you, Christy, to stand here before me. As I pray, I need you to drink. And as I pray and as you drink, the Lord is healing your child at Baylor Hospital. When you drink and complete that glass of water, your child will be able to take a full bottle. Now, see, that doesn't sound like important to you. But see, my child was a child who could not suck, swallow, and breathe. I remember them giving me the glass. And when I took the first drink, I almost fell out. And she said, no, baby, you can't hit the floor yet. You got to drink all the water. You got to drink it all. And they had to literally hold me up. They began to stand behind me because the weight of glory in the room fell and dropped and the anointing was so heavy and so and I was trying to fall and they made sure that I drank the entire glass of water after I drank the water and after we finished praying and shouting and I fell out in the floor and after I fell out in the floor and laid there for a while when I got up then I ran around the room after we did all that Miss Betty fed me but listen she fed me and then they said go to the hospital and I got in my car and I drove to Baylor Hospital, downtown Dallas. And I walked in the NICU unit and I, and I have to, they have to take him out of the incubator. I need you to get the full picture. They have to take him out the incubator. And I said, I need to feed my baby a bottle. And they were saying, well, he's not taking the full bottle. But when I gave him that bottle, that day, that moment, he took the full bottle and not another time did he have problems taking a bottle because I was ready for my child to get strong enough to come home. See, that's what intercession is. 
sister Robbie said, listen, I step into the spirit and I become you. No, not witchcraft, not any of that. What she means is I care about you so much. I'm praying for you as if I am you. I am going before the throne until the Lord answers you. I don't give up before him until he answers you. Hallelujah. That was one. That's only one of the time I could tell you countless times that I stood before her. There was a season and a time that we were having problems in our house. I've talked about that before being a blended family and all of the challenges that, that come before that. I went to a house to a little old prayer meeting and I let her stand and she began to just call out everybody that had spoken against my union. She began to call out everybody that was trying to keep my union from going forward and she began to to rebuke and to bind and she began to cast down to pluck up and to root out she began to stand and war on our behalf I want you to catch that it wasn't my behalf it was our behalf it was our behalf she said not on my watch that's what the intercessors do she said not on my watch sister Christy she gave me my own individual prophetic word she gave me clear instructions for my house and she said not on my watch. Mm, that's what we need today. Somebody to intercede to the Lord on our behalf and say, not on my watch. We buried a soldier, a true soldier in the army of the Lord. And when I began to preach last week, I stood up and I've told several people this. So I don't know how you feel about the Holy Ghost, but if you're on my live, you have to understand that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And when I stood up, I told my husband, it was literally as if you were watching a movie that I was watching a movie. And you know how on the movie you can see spirits enter people, but this time it was the Holy Spirit. When I stood up, I felt another power rest up on me and rise up in me as I went forth to to preach and declare the word of God. So it might sound weird when I say I need you to go watch a transfer of power, <laughs> but I need you to watch it. It's on my YouTube. All the funerals are live these days because only a certain amount of people could come. And so it's already on, it was already on their YouTube for the funeral home. But I need you to take time and go stop by and listen to a transfer of power because I believe God has a word for you in that message. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, the saints are going home. We had a lot of generals that went home at the end of last year. The saints are going home and we keep talking about mantles and we keep wanting the mantles of somebody else. And God is saying, just walk in the power, just step into the power that there's actually a transfer of power going on. And if you put yourself in position, you will receive the transfer of power. The transfer means to move from one to another. So that means that power is not resident in two places. He is moving it from one place to another. Hallelujah. 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 I guess this was testimony service tonight. Hallelujah. 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 So I'm just glad y'all jumped in tonight. Listen, I feel the glory of God. I, I had said I was going to get on here and not preach tonight. That I was just going to get on here and see how y'all were doing. Um, just to check in, to remind those of you who haven't, that the, that the next Art of Hearing class starts on February the 1st. Um, and that if you are in need of scholarships. We do have a few scholarships available. If you are someone who wants to, uh, if you are in need of scholarship, don't DM me. That got chaotic the last time. If you are in need of a scholarship, email admin at christydobbins.com. Somebody, one of, one of my mentees is on here, can put that in the, in the chat. Admin at christydobbins.com. Let us know that you are in need of a scholarship and you would desire and you have the time to commit to four Monday nights in a row in the month of February. Uh, and we will see if we can match you with someone who desires to give a scholarship. Hallelujah. 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 I, I, I think that's it though. I think that's all we have tonight. I just want to um, remind you that the Lord loves you, uh, that you are valuable, 
but also that you're invaluable. You know, a lot of times we tell people, uh, I get it. The Bible says if we don't cry out, the rocks will cry out on our behalf. But I want you to know that you're invaluable, that God has something exactly for you to do. And what that means to be invaluable is he, he doesn't have someone else that can do it. it it's your assignment. It, it's your call. It's your. That's why the Apostle Paul says, I have finished my course. There is a course that is designed only for you. There is a course that God has set out for you. There is a destiny, which means a destination that God has chartered just for you. You are invaluable to the kingdom because that assignment belongs to you. You can't be replaced. That's why the Holy Spirit, when the Bible says that he will, he won't strive with men always. That's why the Holy Spirit has been striving with some of you all because he's trying to bring you in to full position to run the race that God has set before you. So you are valuable and you are invaluable. Don't make, let people make you think you can easily be replaced because God only made one of you. You are fearfully, you are wonderfully made. You have um, been ordained from the foundation of the world to do exactly what God called and purposed you to do. God loves you. He hath need of thee. Listen, he hath need of thee. Some of you, 2021 is going to be the year that you fully surrender to God. You're going to surrender to him in a way that you never have before. And, and, and in your so doing, he is going to open up. He is going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. It is in your surrender. It is in your submission that he is going to open up. It's like the floodgates are going to be open for some of you who fully listen. Thank you. Holy ghost. Some of you been waiting too long. You've been trying to, to wait until you got a perfect life, but listen, you cannot attain perfection on your own. Listen, we are growing in faith. We're going from faith to faith and glory to glory, but we will not be perfect while we are here on this earth, but we are to desire perfection through God. We are to de desire to live out what the word of God says. We are to desire, even when we fall short, our heart is to desire the things of God. And God is saying to somebody on here tonight, he's been waiting on you. He's been waiting for a full surrender. He's been waiting for a full commitment. He's been waiting for you to die to yourself and that you will pick up your cross and you will follow him. He is waiting for somebody to forsake all, to forsake others and to follow after him with all that you have. He is waiting for you. Listen, again, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And sometimes, uh, sometimes the problem is we're trying to make our ways his ways. But his ways will never come down and be reduced to our ways. They're always going to be higher. They're always going to be superior. They're always going to be right. Stop seeking perfection and just pursue just pursue with all your might. Just pursue through obedience. Just pursue through prayer. Just pursue through reading the word of God. Just pursue. Just begin to chase God. Just begin to seek him. Just begin to love him. Why did I end with love him? Because he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You can't say you love him and you purposely and willfully, willfully, uh, live oppositionally to him. If you love me, his word says, you will keep my commandments. That's not the 10 commandments. That's, that's what he's commanded us to do in the new Testament. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. Pursue. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give out. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Set your face like a flint. Look into the author and the finisher of our faith and watch God manifest himself through you. See, see, the problem is, as I was talking about my father earlier and I said, which I've never talking to, talked about that from that perspective. I've never talked about my father's testimony in that manner. I've never shared it in that manner. I, but, but I want you to understand um, 
what God was saying that the whole time that the world had been revolved around me, I, I had lost sight of what was going on with my father. That's, that, that's somebody on this live. It, it's still about you that you've lost sight of what's going on with your heavenly father. You've lost sight and you've convinced yourself, you've convinced yourself, I'm okay. I'm going to do it my way and I'm okay. But I don't want you to be so consumed with you that you forget about him. I don't want you to be, be so consumed with your will that you forget about his will. Listen, even Jesus struggled in the garden and said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass. The very cup that he came to earth to take. He came to earth to die, but he still stopped and said, God, if it be your will, let this cup pass. And then once he resolved it, much like I said, my father wrestled, but after he wrestled in prayer, he concluded, not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. Somebody has got to resolve that tonight. Not my will, not my will, but thy will be done. How do I know if it's, will, if it's his will? First of all, anything that's his will gives him complete glory. God does not will anything in this earth that does not honor him that does not lift up the name of Jesus because scripture says, if I be lifted up, I will draw men unto me. Anything that's his will is not going to be contradictory with the word of God. Anything that's his will, anything that's his will is going to be in alignment with the word. Anything that's his will is going to bear spiritual fruit. Anything that's his will is going to actually cause you to die to your flesh. I, I, I can't do his will and not die to Christy because Christy had other dreams. Christy had other desires. Christy said, I'm not going to be a preacher. Christy said, let me go and kick it for a minute. Let me go kick it for a season and I'm not going to do this. But we're all going to come to a point where we have a nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done in this earth. But I want you to make it more personal in this earth. That's what we are. We are. We're earth because we go back to ashes to ashes and dust to dust. So, Father, your will be done in this earth. In, in the earth named Christy, in the earth named Tawanji, in the earth named Pastor Josh, in the earth named Boss Wife, in the earth, in the earth named Jazz the Roofer, in the earth, not my will but your will be done in the earth name, Marcia, in the earth name, Renee, put your name there. That's where he wants his will to be done in that earth. Before we talk about the earth all around us in this earth, in this earth, can his will be done in this earth as it is in heaven? Not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I close tonight, I want you to be prayerful all week. I want you to be watchful all week. The Bible said, yes, I want the Bible says to watch and pray. The Bible tells us to be vigilant because your adversary goes about as a Russian, as, as, as a roaring lion. So he's not really a lion, but as a lion, he's not really a lion who is the king of the jungle, but he goes around like he is as he's going around like he's the lion. You got to be vigilant this week. I sense the Holy Spirit. I saw what you said, Joshua Parra, to flow. I, I, I sense the Holy Spirit. Uh, listen, you, you have to be watchful this week. What has happened in America, we're asking for those of you in the other countries to pray for America this week as we go through a transfer of power. As we go through a transfer of power. I don't care who you voted for. I don't care if you're the left or the right. Right now, 
We have to pray for unity and we have to pray for peace. Right now, we have to pray that the plans and the schemes or what the Bible calls the wiles of the devil will be exposed. Right now, we need the spirit of truth, who is the Holy Ghost, the person of the Holy Ghost, the revealer of all things. We need the Holy Ghost to reveal all things. We need him to reveal in even in this late hour, the plans and the plots of the enemy. Right now, we need to be on one accord in the body of Christ, and we're not. Right now, while some are praying for peace. Others are still praying for a disruption. So we have to go know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. This is not the season of time to be lukewarm and to straddle the fence because listen to me, you are going to have to call upon the name of the Lord. It's not going to be over even after January 20th. It is not going to be over. Listen, you are going to have to call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says, seek him while he may be found. What we have seen, this division, this schism, this ism that is in the body of Christ that has caused a fragmentation and a disunity is much like the Tower of Babel. Listen to me what I'm saying. Holy Ghost. I really don't want to talk about this. I just need y'all to stay safe. But the, 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 the Tower of Babel, he had to confuse their language because they were trying to attain something that unity would have gotten them. They were trying to build a pathway to heaven. And because they were in unity, they were going to achieve it. So he had to confuse their language in order for their plan not to take place. We need the Holy Spirit to confuse the language of the enemy. We need that to be a confusion and a disruption in the spirit against principalities and powers that have been set against this country. We need people of God to call up on the name of Jesus. We need to plead the blood of Jesus over the White House, over our schools, over our churches, over our homes, over our businesses. But we're asking God to confuse the language. See, listen, I don't pick fights with the devil because I understand that I cannot win against the devil. But listen, I know one who can. I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I know that Michael, Michael, the archangel will war on our behalf. We are asking for Michael, the one who went and went into the heavenlies and had to disrupt that which was holding up the answers to Daniel's prayer. We're asking for Michael, the archangel, the same one when the enemy was trying to contend and fight over the body of Moses. We're asking for God to unleash angels to war on our behalf. Because we have underestimated this fight. We have underestimated this fight. We have allowed the mouth of those who are speaking contradictory to the word of God to be louder than those who are truth bearers. We have got to allow truth to disseminate and to be dispatched into the airways. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you. Hallelujah. Lord, we need you from the north, the south, the east and the west. We ask for the spirit of truth to sweep over this nation, the spirit of truth to sweep over God, un un uproot and pull out everything that's not like you. God, in the name of Jesus, every lying tongue, every lying spirit, every prophet that is not of you, every prophet that is not of you, every one that is not in alignment with you, we ask that the spirit of truth will prevail. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. I don't pick fights with people. I don't call people's name. I just ask God to be God. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God, let your will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. Some trust in horses. 
The Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But I will remember the name of the Lord. I will remember the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's a strong tower. The righteous run therein and are safe. That's where we need to hide this week, not hide from people, but we need to hide in the spirit. We need to do what God told Moses to do. Listen, when God told Moses, now I feel my preacher, to go into the cleft of the rock and hide in the rock and my hinder parts are going to pass by you. That rock was Jesus. We have got to go and hide in the rock this week. We've got to go hide in the rock that is Jesus. No, not high in the natural. I'm talking about the spiritual right now. You're going to have to be watchful and you're going to have to pray. This week. This week. And next week. And next week. And next week. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is Lord to the glory of God. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Every other idol that has arisen and has tried to have a name that is greater than the name of Jesus shall come down. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's why we started with being in prayer all day long, because you don't know what you're going to see. Listen to me. You don't know what you're going to see this week. You don't know what you're going to see this week. And you're going to need to call on him every time you see something that your soul can't really take. Because the Bible says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So every time that you see something that your soul can't take, that your mind says, you know what? I would have never thought this would happen in 2021. I would have never thought this would happen in the United States of America. You're going to have to call him. You're going to have to call on the name. You're going to have to call on the name. You're going to have to seek the Lord while he may be found. You're going to have to plead the blood of Jesus. You're going to have to do, uh, uh, you're going to have to say, Satan, the Lord rebuke thee. I need you not to say you rebuke him because the devil is not scared of you. Satan, the Lord rebuke thee. That's the scripture. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be watchful. Be watchful. Be watchful. Thank you, Lord. And do what the scripture says. Guard your heart. You're going to have to guard it with all diligence. You're going to have to guard it with all diligence. You're going to need your shield. You're going to need the shield of faith. You're going to have to guard it with all diligence. Because what's happening is when systems and kingdoms start coming down, everything is exposed. And you don't know what you're going to see when everything is exposed. You think you want exposure, but you're going to have to guard your heart. People have already been wounded. People have already been hurt. You're going to have to guard your heart. Because the enemy will let one half of the church make you turn away from God completely. Guard your heart. Guard your heart mm, with all diligence. He said with all diligence. It's just guard though. You can't lock it because if you lock it, then you can't receive his love in your heart. You just have to protect it. You have to guard it. You just have to make sure you got the right stuff going in. And when you see something that your heart can't take, you have to make sure to go and put something else in over it. You need to listen to the word of the Lord. You need to speak the word of the Lord. You need to make sure that you're fighting and warring back against the spirits, the little subtle spirits that are going to give suggestions this week and tell people to do things they normally would not do. You are going to have to guard your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for everyone that's under the sound of my voice. I thank you for everyone that may look. Thank you, the breastplate of righteousness, that everybody, that everyone uh, that may listen later, Father. I ask God that you would keep them covered in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over them, over their households, over their ministries, over their businesses. God, I ask over their cities, over wherever it is they reside, wherever it is they reside all over the world. God, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood over the United States 
States of America. We plead the blood over every capital in every state. Father God, we ask that your will will prevail. God, we ask that you would just continue to keep us and bless us in the name of Jesus. Ah, we thank you, Lord, that you are very present help in the time of trouble. And we call upon you, Father, because you are not just our, our God, you are our Father. And your word says you will perfect that which concerneth us. God, and we are concerned about these United States of America. So we lay the United States of America at your feet. God, we repent for every sin that America has committed and omitted. We go all the way back to the foundation, God. We ask God for your mercy to prevail. We ask that you would have mercy and you will stay the death angel that has swept through this nation, God. We ask God that you will listen to the few of the remnant that are caught crying out, uh, saying, God, what must we do to be saved? What must we do to maintain here on this earth? God, in the name of Jesus, we ask for a peace that passeth all understanding and we ask for the spirit of unity. God, we ask for a revival, but we understand that revival doesn't come without repentance. So we ask that you will convict the hearts and minds of those Whoever it is, God, that needs to repent, we ask that your Holy Spirit will strive with them, Lord, until you bring about the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you. Mm, we thank you. I pray for you, Shonda. I see you on here in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Every time I see your picture on Facebook, Shonda, I call your name in the name of Jesus, because if the enemy would have had his way, he would have taken you out. Uh, what happened to your daughter wasn't even about you. It was a, about her. It was about you. The enemy was coming after you because the thing that God has anointed and equipped you to do, Shonda strives, God has anointed and equipped you for such a time as this. Listen to me. Everybody likes you. You have a, you have a good cheering squad right now, but I hate to tell you. You, everybody can't go with you. There is a place that God is getting ready to take you that many who were cheering for you when God takes you to that place it is going to cause a divine separation. You are going to be able to see those who were really cheering for you and rooting for you to those who are actually trying to hold on to your coattail. See, it's too heavy. It's too much race. When the apostle Paul says that he, that he finished his course and we're talking about running a race, when you're running a race, you have to take, you have to be lightweight. You take off all the heavy clothing. Shonda, it's, it, it's some amongst you, some that you name as friends. And God says, it's not that you can't love them. They just can't go. They just can't go where God has taken you. He hasn't anointed them where he has taken you will actually take them out because he has prepared it and he has assigned a set destination for you. Uh, it's hard. It's hard. I know it's hard. I, I understand it's hard, but he's going to raise up some to walk with you that you don't know them just yet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And when I say you don't you know them, it's not that you've never seen them. You don't know them to be your intimate circle like you think. But God is going to raise up some that are designed to walk assign you. Listen, listen, it's going to cost you too much. So when God starts separating, he's not asking you to separate because he already knows your heart. He's going to do the separating. So when God does the separating, I pray that God will allow you to guard your heart. I pray that God will keep you, that he will keep your mind and that you will not allow that those people walking away. You will not allow it to wound you to where you can't go forward. But God is going to do some separating. Ah, uh, he's going to do some separating, Shonda. He's going to do some separating because listen, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's just like the scripture. The wheat and the tear have been growing up together, but God only knows the difference. God only knows the difference. Yes. Thank you, Renee. It's not personal. It's not personal. It's not personal. It's not personal. It's spiritual. <laughs> ha, thank you, Holy Ghost. It's not personal. It's spiritual. Your heart makes you want to take everyone. But it's that same heart that God has to protect you from you. I hope you caught that. He has to protect you from you because you will carry too much weight. 
It's actually because he loves you. It's actually because he loves you. It's because he loves you. Come on. Yeah, let the new Shonda arise. It's because he loves you. It's because he loves you. It's because he loves you. You won't do it like those who did it before you. You, you, you won't, you won't, you won't, you won't. But it's because he loves you. Hallelujah. Obeying God will cost you someone. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Shonda, let me, let me tell you something. It's hard when you're the one. It's hard when you're the one. You keep thinking somebody else is the one. And, and then, even though this scripture may sound like it doesn't apply, it's like when John the Baptist said, shall I, are you the one or shall I look for another? You keep saying that about yourself. Am I the one or shall I look for another? Am I the one or do I need to be hooked up with this group? Am I the one or do I need to be, or do I need to, to go over here and connect with this group? Am I the one or do, no, 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 Shonda, you're the one. You're, you're the one. You're the one. You're, you're the one. God is going to bring people around you to help lead and guide you and take you. But you are the one. He's going to send people to pour in you. He's going to send people, thank you, Holy Spirit, to help you get the confidence that you need in God and who God has called you to be. But you're the one. Stop saying it. it, it maybe it's them. Are you the one? Or maybe should I, should I look for another? No, no, no. It's you. It's you. Hallelujah. Tawanji says, she is new, it is new, and the new them will be new. Yeah, it's you, Shonda. It's, it's you. It's you. And he'll send people to speak into your life, to pour into you, to, to, to put the word of God in you. Uh, you you've seen too much in church. Hallelujah. So some things you have to unlearn and some things you have to relearn and some things weren't wrong. You just have to relearn it because you forgot, but some things you have to unlearn and he's going to send people to, to help you in those areas. But you are the one. You are the one. <laughs> you are the one. You are. Listen, you don't have to earn it. You don't have to perform for it. You don't have to be a boss. Let me help you with all these things. You don't have to do anything. God has already settled that you are the one. It's not contingent on your performance. He just declared it. You are the one. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Just be. Just be. Now you're going to make me want to go on all night on that, Renee. Because I think many of us have a problem with just being. We think we're, we, we are doers, but we don't know how to be. We don't know how to just be who God called me to be. We don't know how to stand in who God called us to be. So when other people come around and other people are doing things differently, we now surrender to what other people say. We surrender to those voices because now we feel like we need to do what they're doing. And God said, just be. We need to do it how they're doing it. But God is saying, just be who God has called you to be. Be who he's called you to be. Because listen, listen, doing what everybody else does is not going to work for you anyway, because he called you to be who he's called you to be. I've learned that the hard way, Shonda. Listen, you may never fit in with the clique or the club. I don't fit in with the clique or the club, but I am, I, my, my, my blessing comes from me being who God has called me to be. See, if the clique or the club won't let me be, then I don't need to be there and I don't need to do what they're doing. I need to be where I can be. That's why it starts off this way. Be fruitful. I want you to hear that. Be fruitful, not do fruitful, not do fruitful, be fruitful. 
Tawanji said, B, even if it's new. B. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't be long. Come on. Just be. That word is for somebody else. Be who God has called you to be. That's why you keep running into places and you don't fit. You have to change you in order to fit. That that price is too high. That that price is too high to be somebody that he didn't call me to be. It, it's too high for me to be in the clique or the club to, to be it who he's, if I can't be who he's called me to be. Just be. Just be. Mm -hmm. It's like I can hear somebody, Shonda, trying to remind you why certain things didn't work. Trying to tell you this didn't work because you did this. This over here didn't work because you did this. And I want you to understand whatever that is or whoever they are. Render those words null and void. We send them back to the pit of hell. And you need to just be who God has called you to be. They have blamed you for what has happened in life. And it's not your fault. It was simply that you couldn't be. Now, I don't want to get personal, but I could. I could. Because sometimes women, even those relationships that don't last, and I'm talking to the women right now, it's because you are in a place where you couldn't be who God has called you to be. And God is not going to argue with anybody over who he created. He ain't going to argue with anybody over who he called you to be. Be. Be who he called you to be. See, see, the greatest asset I have is to be who God called me to be. When I'm who God called me to be, I'm a better wife. I'm a better mother. I'm a better whatever I do because it's rooted in me first being who he called me to be. And I have to trust him enough to be who he called and created me to be. The problem is many of us don't discover those things until we're in relationships. And now it's in conflict with the relationship. Whoever on here is having to war in your house to be who God is calling you to be. I ask that God will send you help. Sometimes help is through counseling. Sometimes help is through God allowing somebody to come and speak to your spouse on your behalf without you even having to say a word. Yes, he argued on the cross and won. B, look at the devil. If he tried to taunt Jesus, if thou be the son of God, well, God just said, God just said, Satan, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Why would you say if I be the son of God? If, no, 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 just be, just be. That's why your identity has got to be in God. Because if your identity is not in him, you're going to be tossed to and fro. If you are not rooted and grounded in him, you're going to be subject to whatever whims may come your way. Be. When I say be, be who God called you to be. Anything he called you to be is for the kingdom of God. God did not call us. Listen, listen, listen. Even if God called you to be an accountant, it's for the kingdom of God. The world may benefit from it, but when you, you, you need to you thank you, Holy Spirit. If your gifts and talents are not used for the glorification of God, you're not being. You're just doing. You're just doing. You're just doing. Let's be. Rest in it. Accept who he's called you to be. What Jesus said, not my will. Just rest in it. Just rest in it, Shonda. I'm still talking to you, but I'm talking to everybody else too. Just rest in it. That he said, you are the one. Stop looking for another. Stop looking externally for what he's given you internally. Ah, that's a word for somebody else too. Stop looking externally for what he's given you internally. Let me tell you, if you don't be who he's called you to be, you'll, you'll, you'll just run around. Let me, let me try this. That didn't work. 
let me try this. Okay, that didn't work. Let, let, let me try this. That didn't work. But when you be who he's called you to be, you're going to flourish in that area. That's why he says, be fruitful. Be fruitful. I want you to hear that. He didn't say, do fruitful. It's okay, Amanda. 40 years of a wrong choice. It's okay. Repent. It's that, it's that simple. Repent. And now just be. See, God is God. He is a redeemer of the time. He can restore the years. So you're talking about 40 years. That's absolutely nothing to God. Nothing is too hard for God. Is there anything too hard for God? Nothing is too hard for God. So don't allow the devil to make you just sit here and regret, Amanda, and to go back and around and around. And I should have done this and I should have done that. The devil is a liar. Repent. Repent. Ask God who he called you to be and then be. There is no thing, nothing and no thing too hard for God. Hallelujah. I don't know how long we've been on here. Um, I think I'm over that. I don't know what time I got on here. But I want you to be. And I want you to watch this week and pray. And while you're praying, I want you to pray for somebody else this week. Hallelujah. God bless you all. I'm praying for you. I, I sincerely want to see God's best for you. I sincerely, hallelujah. Yes, God add to Amanda's years to experience the new. Okay, I don't feel bad, Renee. I thought I was on here like an hour and a half. Um, uh, Remesia said I was, she's, she's Eastern time, but it was worth it. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Um, I want to remind everyone the art of hearing is, uh, the link is in my bio. I want to remind you, hallelujah. Um, thank you, Pastor Josh. I want to remind you to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. A lot of people like my post when I made it, but I need those subscribers. I'm new to all of this still. God bless you, Jennifer. God bless you, Queen too. God bless you, Marcia. God bless you, Minister Sharon, um, Mrs. Bernard. Um, but um, I want you to listen to that message too, transfer of power. Um, and may the Lord bless you real good. Depending on the events this week, I may do a pop in one night just to make sure we're all, all okay, um, that we're doing well. But I am praying that God will confuse the language of the enemies, which prevents them from communication. And when communication is interrupted, the plans are interrupted. And that's what I meant um, for those when I referenced the Tower of Babel, they were trying to build a tower to heaven. And now, listen, we'll talk about this another night because they were accomplishing their plan because there is strength in unity. Anytime we are unified, we are able to accomplish anything. That's why the enemy fights us in unity. If he can keep disunity, he can prevent the plans of God from fully coming to pass because we're now, that's why the Bible says a house divided against itself, it, it, it cannot stand. And so this week, I'll be praying for you. Uh, thank you. She watched the transfer of power. I'll be praying for you. I'm praying that the Lord keep you safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. And that when we come on again, that we don't have to report that anyone we know and love has, has transitioned on to glory. And that the Lord will just strengthen us during this season uh, to press in and to talk to him. And I just pray for his protection, for his leadership, for his guidance. Um, and I pray that all of you have a good night again. The YouTube channel, please subscribe. The Art of Hearing begins on February um, the 1st. 
We do have another class. So for those of you who will be preparing and waiting, that's coming in March. We don't know which class that will be. Someone just sent me a request to be on my live. I, I don't know you or I would <laughs> accept it. Um, but I will say this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's I believe that's why the Lord allowed you to do that. Uh, I'll have to look at your bio later and see if maybe we can do that another time. I did say I want to do a Q&A where I bring a couple of people on live. And so maybe if, if things aren't that crazy this week and we have to talk about that on Sunday night, maybe I will bring several of you uh, can come on and ask whatever questions that you want to ask. And I bring you on and we dialogue a little bit and go on to the next person. But God bless you and keep you. I am signing off for tonight. Um, this will be posted as well later on YouTube for anything. Oh, for those of you two who are single, maybe even married, but I, because I talked about mother-daughter relationships, I talked about quite a few things. The Sunday night check-in from last Monday night, I believe that's January the 9th, on relationships, it's, it, it kind of switched there. I really feel that somebody needs to hear that. Um, because we did go into sometimes the strain that some people have in those relationships. Okay. God bless you. Yes. The Q and a, I do think that would be good. Um, and so, uh, bye Jasmine. I, I will see you all next week. God bless you.